James, thank you for doing this, my man. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing great. Um, before we talk about Saturday, I actually want to start at the beginning of this crazy week for you because I remember seeing you on Thursday at the uh, at the hotel. You were there. So so you came to Houston when? Uh, Wednesday. You came Wednesday and you were there to corner Yusuf Zalal. Correct. All right. So you're training with it. How, how much do you weigh when you come? Do you have any idea? Uh, yeah. So I typically, uh, I typically walk around at like anywhere from like 90, low nineties usually. Um, this time, however, like I trained. So I, I, when I get on the road with, with Mark Montoya, my coach, like we just, we go hard, like we get it in because I don't get to train with him that much. So whenever I am with him, I like to work really hard. So, uh, we trained uh, Wednesday night really hard. And then I trained for six hours total on Thursday. Uh, so I lost a ton of weight and I didn't have a ton of water in me. So I got down, uh, I think I was below 180 actually, which is unheard of for me, but because I hadn't been drinking much water and I trained like crazy, uh, I think that's why, but I was, uh, I was probably 85, you know, walking around the whole week. Six hours. Do you usually do that? Is that like a common Thursday afternoon for you? No, no, it's usually like four or five, but okay. like, we, wow. you know, we get our we get our brains going and uh it just you know i just like to pick his brain a ton i'm, I'm a student in the game and uh that guy's uh he's got some good stuff and uh you know we try to learn off of each other so we just kind of get in there and you know it was it was fun okay so where are you when you find out that antonio royo is potentially out of his fight against trevin giles and and what time of the day is this uh this is probably like two o'clock uh yeah probably two o'clock i was at lunch on um, friday right just, Correct. Yep. Correct. Uh, yeah, it's probably two o'clock. I'm, I'm at lunch. Uh, I just got done eating uh, like a huge rice bowl. I had a Coke. Uh, yeah, I literally just got done. And, and Jason House, uh, my manager, gets a text that says uh, Arroyo was just taken to the hospital or something like that. And I just in passing, I was like, I'll fight. I'll fight Giles. Or Giles I'll fight that dude. And uh I didn't think anything of it. You know what I mean? I didn't, obviously I didn't, I didn't think it would come to come to first. I said, if they, you know, we get a deal. I'll, I'll fight him. I don't care. Uh, and we didn't even know he was out at this point. We didn't know Arroyo was out at this point. So they start uh, working through everything. And then we, we figure out about 30 minutes later that he is out. And then it's a, it goes to a deal where it's like, uh, do you want the fight? And then obviously like the, the kind of like the negotiation talks, but I pretty much told them, they're like, you need to go to weigh-ins and weigh in. And I'm like, I told them, I said, I'm not going to weigh-ins until you guys figure this out. You're not going to go up there, get me on the stage. And then like, let's say you guys don't want to pay me anymore. You don't, you know what I mean? Like the deal isn't worked out. And then I'm going to look like a punk for not wanting to fight him. Hmm. You know what I mean? So like, you're not doing that to me. So like, if you guys don't figure this out by 3.30, which was the time that everybody was leaving. So if you guys don't figure this out by 3.30, then we can just, you know, I'm good with it. So I gave him until 3.30 or whatever. And then nothing came so i was just like all right cool it's probably not gonna happen uh and like 345 rolls around and they're like you have the fight and i'm like no 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 we don't you know there's there's other things that need to be talking we can talk about money you know like that's i'm not fighting this i'm not fighting on 18 hours notice above my weight class on the current contract that i'm on so anyway they they worked it out and i got uh we, we worked out the deal and uh i got on a, a shuttle and made it there before weigh-ins like a few minutes before you know like i, I jumped on a scale um, and went to the ceremonial weigh-ins, which everybody sees. Wow. Um, so are you happy with the deal that you got? That's a shrewd move on your part. Well done. Yeah, thank you. I mean, uh, yes, I am. I'm, I'm very happy with the deal. I, I appreciate the UFC, uh, you know, doing that for me. Uh, I, I think this is like, these are things that some of the younger guys need to need to understand is, you know, like they had, they had 13 fights on the card, which is pretty typical for a UFC card. But one, one fell off already. And then with Arroyo out would have been another one falling off, which would have put them in a tough spot, given that they have to fill the slots for ESPN and they have to fill the pay-per-view spots as well. So uh, it would have put them in a really tough spot uh, if they didn't have that fight. So I knew I had a, I knew I had a good, a good hand uh, for him, which really, I mean, at the end of the, at the end of the day, man, like I've been doing this for a long time. And uh, somebody asked me in an interview, they're like, Oh, do you think that they'll, you know, they'll get you back on the next one? I said, no, like, this is not, that's not what that's, that's not what, this is like the younger fighters need to understand that it's not their job to get us back as fighters. You know what I mean? It's not their job to give us, you know, they, if you're not happy with the current deal, like it is what it is. It's face value, right? Like if you don't, 
if you don't give them what you want now, you're not going to get it on the next one or don't expect to get it on the next one at least. You know, I'm not saying those guys don't take care of me. This is not a shot at the UFC right, right, right. at all, at all, because I'm very happy with, with what we did. And I'm very, I've been very happy with them. You know, I've never, I've never made as much money as I have with them in my entire life. So I'm not, this is not a shot on them, but this is a business and the guys don't understand that the younger kids don't understand that, you know? So, uh, we worked out a deal that it gave them the fight. Um, it gave me what I wanted and it was a win-win. That's what you need to work out is the win-win, right? You right. Know, the, the win-win situation for both parties. So I understand that. And, and it, it, uh, it worked out for both of us. And just out of curiosity, was it a deal like the win-win? Was it a deal that, that was just for this fight or was it like a new long-term deal that you got? It was a new contract. Oh, nice. Well done. Um, all right. So then you go to the, the arena. Do you actually cut weight for this or did you just step on the scale with what you got? So whenever I heard the fight happen, I was 186.2. Okay. Uh, and uh, so I just stopped eating and drinking. And I ended up weighing in at like 83 and a half, I think, which was crazy to me. And that I floated that much in a matter of two hours or whatever it was. Uh, so, yeah, no, I didn't have to cut anything. Amazing. And so when you stepped on the scale, did you know for sure that the fight was going to happen? Because based on our reporting, Mark Ramundi spoke to the, the Texas Commission. They had to check in with you to do your medicals later that night. So was it not even official at that moment? It, it, it was. All I needed was a it was like a the regular physical that the doctor can look at you and be like, yeah, you're fine. Okay. Obviously, I'm going to pass the physical. So that was the only – it was basically a formality at that point. You know what I, mean? I knew I had the fight. I knew the fight was on. Uh yeah, so I did the physical at like 9 p.m. or something like that. Um, and what was crazy is like I didn't even bring a mouthpiece with me, so I had to go get a mouthpiece molded at, at 8 that night, and then huh. they turned around and gave it to me the next morning because I, I just got Invisalign, so my teeth had moved. So I had to go get another mouthpiece remolded, and uh, it was a crazy, crazy deal for me, man. Like i would never been a part of something like, you know what I mean? Like I've done some pretty stupid stuff in my, uh, in my career, but that one takes the cake. Yeah, um, in your in your entire career, like even outside of the UFC, what's the least amount of time you've had to prepare for a fight prior to this? As an amateur, it, and this is this is, I didn't think it was that big of a deal to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, in the Midwest, this is common. Like, like it's just you know, grow, coming up in the amateurs, I would show up to venues and fight people on two hours notice wow. regularly. I mean, it wasn't. It's just, it was a different time though, too. Like I've been fighting for almost 14 years. So like this, you know what I mean? This is in the wild west days. So, uh, I have almost 65 fights pro and amateur. So this is a long, long time ago. It's not like that anymore. This is back when like the weight classes weren't a real thing. Like it wasn't even regulated at where I live. So like, you know, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, in terms of like high level, uh, it's not anywhere right. close, you know, a, a few days I've taken a fight on a few days notice, but not like this. Did you guys have time to devise a game plan? Did you even have time to like watch his stuff? I've watched. I know exactly who he is. Uh, Zach Cummings, my teammate, fought him. I coach. I helped coach Zach for that fight, so I know him very well. Um, I mean, I felt like he was very similar to Warley Alves, who I who I fought a couple years ago. So we pretty much just stuck to the stuck to the game plan of of that. He's a lot. He was a lot bigger. He's a lot faster. He hit harder. Um, and the, what really hurt me was the. I just wasn't in my normal fight shape, mm. you know, like I'm in, I'm in, I'm always in good shape, but good shape and fight shape are not the same thing. Uh, I just, I just wasn't able to, if you, if you watch the fight, you can tell it's just a little different than what I'm used to. You know what I mean? I normally move a right. lot more. I'm kind of flowing a little bit more. It's just really hard for me to find my groove. Uh, I think that's, you know, the first round I spent a lot of energy trying to get that choke, which was really close. But I just I just wasn't able to find my groove, and I think that's just because of the you know the short notice. Obviously, if I had two weeks to prepare for it, I, I, I truly feel like it would have been a different ballgame. By the way, do you get nervous like on Saturday? Was it a little different for you than your typical fights because you didn't have any time to prepare? I wouldn't say like I wouldn't say nervous, man. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been fighting. I've, I fought some really good guys, and uh, yeah, I mean it's the same. It felt the same. It, okay. it really did. Like that's it's what's crazy is I told my coach I said, man, this is this doesn't feel any different. You know what I mean? Like you're going to get the same little jitters and all that stuff, you know, uh, in the way in line. And, you know, when you see the, your opponent for the first time and all that, it's all the same stuff, man. You know, just the only, the only difference is like, you don't have time to prepare. So right. that's, it was, it was no different. You know, the only thing, the only difference for me was like, I wasn't in as good a shape. I truly feel like if they offered that fight six weeks ago, even at middleweight, I feel like it's a way different fight. I mean, I just wasn't in anywhere close to the shape that I normally am in. 
Um, I saw on your Instagram on Saturday morning, uh, your wife came to to support you, right? She flew out to support you. What yeah. was it like when you told her, hey, I'm going to fight tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, she was like, she's all about it, man. She, you know, she knows I live the life and I'm ready. And uh, she, she has like some, like a, almost like a blind faith for me. You know what I mean? Like if I say, hey, I'm going to go jump off this cliff, she'd be like, okay, have fun, love you. you know? <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, she knows. She knows that I typically make somewhat educated decisions and I don't regret doing this. I would do this again. You know what I mean? I would, even knowing the outcome, I would probably do it again. Uh, I think I, I don't feel like a loser today. You know what I mean? I'm talking to you. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel, uh, I feel like my stock only went up. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. I, I truly feel like uh, I told Mark this. I said, I really feel like I had a chance to change my life. Uh, you know, I, my stock went up. But I feel like my stock could have went up way more with the with the decision, which I don't agree with. I thought I took rounds one and three, but that's obviously we don't we don't want to get into that, right? Uh, to be the champ, you got to beat the champ, right? Right, 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 exactly. Um, <laughs> I'm getting, okay, I'm messing with you. I'm messing. No. I'm trying to get you riled up. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. But I'm wondering, like, what are you thinking in that first round? Because it looked like, oh my God, he's gonna submit him. Like, this is incredible. What yeah. are you thinking? How close were you? I was very close, man. Um, Gosh, dang it. You know, it, it kind of irritates me even talking about it. Uh, if that was a 70 pounder, I feel like I would have got it. His hips were just extremely heavy. His grip was way stronger than any, you know what I mean? Like it, the, the size plays a big role whenever I would, I would get the grip. I just wasn't able to get that normal squeeze. Like I, like I, like I know, not, I know I can, he would get his hands in and he would just pull He, he was really strong in the first, you know, uh, I just couldn't get a hold of him. Like I, like I wanted to, uh, his hips were good. He, he did a really good job of keeping my choking arm on top rather than on bottom. And I couldn't get his hips. He would move his hips. The other, he just had real strong hips, real athletic. I feel like if I would have got that in the second or the third, I would have finished that, but he was fresh still. Uh, so it made it a little, little harder to finish. I, it, I should have finished it. It kind of pisses me off even talking about it still, but whatever, you know what I mean? It's out of my control at this point. When did you start to feel like, man, I, I just don't have my same cardio. Like when did you start to get tired? In the back. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know, you know what I mean? Like, I know it's just different. You know, I wasn't tired in the back or anything like that, but I knew, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't feel that I wasn't my normal self. I wasn't recovering like I usually do. Normally, no matter how tired I am in the first, that one minute, I'm, I'm ready to roll. Like, round two is not, it's not a problem. I was exhausted. Really? Uh, I was, this is the most tired I've ever been in my entire life. Like, round three was all heart. Like, I didn't, I was smoked, man. Uh, Mark got my ass in between second and third, and, uh, and he was like, you know, give me five minutes. And that's, I just I went out, and I was like, I can't take him down. That was what was making me tired is I kept trying to wrestle him. Uh, and uh, I was like, I just got to try to knock this dude. I got to try to knock his head into the fifth row. And I, I did. And once again, I feel like that if that was a you know, welterweight, right. I feel like those punches would have been a bigger impact because I know I hurt him a couple times. I know I did. Uh, I was I was laying some big shots on him, but I just, you know, the – it is what it is, man. I knew I knew what I was getting into when I did, so I, I would do it all over again. I knew what I was getting involved in whenever I whenever I said yes, but it just sucks, you know. The sizes it made a difference. But you did feel before they read the scorecards that you had won two rounds to three, first and third. I felt like I won first and third. Yes, absolutely. But I had seen some of the other decisions, right? And kids from Houston. He's a Houston cop in Houston. Like I. I didn't feel good about it, man. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I thought I took first and third though, but that's not even my problem. You know what I mean? Like it, my fight was a close fight. Like I, I, I've thought about this. Uh, I think I do a very good job of unobjectively thinking about this. And I feel like if you take all the bad decisions uh, from the rest of the night out, I feel like uh, my fight was too close to complain about for me. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not complaining that I lost the fight. I thought I won first and third, but we'll push that to the side. What is baffling to me is the judge gave him the first round and gave me the third round. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know how, I don't, I don't know how you can score the first round any other way than 10, nine for me. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like maybe I'm. No, that that's one of the <laughs> worst scorecards. Bit... One of the worst scorecards I've ever seen the 10, nine, then to come and find out that that's the guy who scored Joe Solis, who scored 49, 46 for Jones, um, which is less egregious 
compared to what he did to you. I, I, I don't know. I think someone who doesn't even know a thing about MMA, just watching that and watching how you're trying to submit him would be like, oh, yeah, of course that guy won that round, right? Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, gosh, it's frustrating, man. It's super frustrating. Uh, yeah, if you don't even have to watch MMA to, to understand. I mean, when you control somebody for three and a half, four minutes, you know, I don't know what else I could do to win the round. You know, what, how did they? How did they even give him the give him the round off? Of, he hit me like three times. You know what I mean? I took him down. I got the takedown. Uh, I controlled his back. I almost finished him three yeah. or four times. Like I don't know what else I can do to 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 win the round. You know, like that. Once again, it's out of my control, so I don't want to spend a ton of time complaining about it but that at least to go back i don't want to make the interview about this the scoring system but if you guys aren't going to change the rules of the scoring or we're not going to do anything about that at least tell me if i'm winning or losing for god's sake so you like the idea of open scoring absolutely in any other realm yeah how do you not know if you're winning or losing it's like watching a basketball game from from 100 yards away and you're not keeping score after two hours, you don't know if you won or lost, man. Like, not to mention that we're using a scoring a, a, a scoring system for another sport that is not even yeah. – it's not even our sport, man. Like, there's – I don't know. It's ridiculous. You're getting – I'm I getting agree. pissed off talking I, about Listen, I agree it. with it's, everything it's, you it's said. It's absurd, man. It's, it's absolutely absurd. absurd. Like, but, hey, I get it. It's not easy to change those things because there is no right answer, right? That's the problem is there is no, like, hey, this is what needs to happen. But – if you're not going to change the rules, at least tell me if I'm winning or losing, man. Like, I, you know, like that's what's so frustrating about it is like, why are we not doing open scoring? It, it's so stupid, man. Like at least, at least tell me if I'm winning or losing. And I know why they don't do it. They don't do it because they're afraid that some of the fights, like people will try to hold on, uh, you know, for the last round. But I'm telling you what, if I knew I was down 0-2 going into the third, I mean, I did it anyway, but I'm trying to knock that dude's head into the fifth row because I had it 1-1 one one going into the third. And it, man, it, to, to give that guy the first round is like is uh, criminal to me. To me, I don't. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I know I'm, my opinion doesn't really matter in this, but it's insane to me. Well, that's actually part of the problem. Your opinion should matter more than anyone's opinion because you're the guy in there, and this is affecting your livelihood. And I couldn't agree more. This idea that someone's just gonna like get on his bicycle and and drive around the cage is the hogwash because you can get penalized for timidity. You can get penalized for not engaging. So you can't just run around. The ref would stop and take a point away from you if that happened. Well, th there's no accountability on these guys either. It's like there's no prerequisite like. Joe saying these guys are on their phone. Like this is what this is what, and it's a problem where I live too. I mean, these guys they they don't they don't understand this what is at stake. You know, mm. th these are real lives. Like they don't understand that they could ruin somebody's life or change their somebody's life like drastically, like good or bad, right? Like it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like I feel like if I would have won that fight, I could be in some. You know, my situation would be even better than what it is right now. And it's just man. They don't understand that they have people's lives at at, uh, at stake, and it, it's it. They should be embarrassed, man. They should be embarrassed by what has happened. And once again, for everybody listening, like I'm not even mad that I lost, but that's not that's not the point here. You know what I mean? The the point is is like, how, how do you score round one for for him is beyond me. Two and three, sure, man. Like whatever, you know. That's I can't I can't complain about it too much, but. Uh, it's it's absurd to me that that that's how it that's how it goes and there's no accountability on their end there's no uh, there's no damage done on their end they can go home that night they get paid right. the same good decision or bad decision they're gonna get asked to come back the next time is you know what I mean like I laid in bed until I didn't really sleep. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, dude, yeah, it's, it sucks, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And uh, again, everyone respects you so much for, for what you did. I, I would imagine your next fight's at 170, right? You're going to go back down? Yeah. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> and hopefully get a full training camp for that. You don't have that one yet, right? Like, you didn't have one before this. No, no. Um, They were talking about something March 7th, but I just, I think I'm going to, uh, yeah. you know, I don't think Take I can some do that. Time. I, I got, I, I'm, I'm coaching quite a few people this this month i need to take a little bit of time off dedicate to the team and uh, i'll get back in there soon I, the new contract will i think the new contract will motivate me to fight a little bit more than i have in the past few years which is really fun you know it's i just it's not very motivating for me to fight some of these guys for what i was making and uh but i think we i think we're at the right place now so hopefully i'll, I'll get a little bit more active and uh, you guys will be seeing me a little bit more
Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.